You know, many of us today do not consider the labor or the harvest that is at hand for us today. And so they don't prepare for it because it takes the study of God's word to be prepared. Until you stop and realize that this harvest consists of family members and loved ones, even your own children, many of these without the knowledge of God's kingdom through Jesus Christ. Romans 10.3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about creating their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. This is because they are sleeping. They are sons of God and they have caused a lack of harvesters. They don't know better and become lost. Romans 10.14 And how can they call on him whom they have not believed? And how will they believe if they have not heard? And how will they hear without a teacher? We don't have the teachers that are taking the time to study God's word today. So the harvesters are few. And the people are blowing in the wind out there in the world lost, heading to darkness, nothing waiting for them after this life. Luke 10, 2, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray then that the Lord of harvest would send laborers into the harvest. This is why laborers are prepared by the study of God's word. And few do this. And so their loved ones have not heard. They don't believe and they can't teach. What a shame. Proverbs 10.5 says, He that gathers in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleeps during the harvest is a son that causes shame. We need to be walking and working, not sleeping, praying for the knowledge and moving closer to our Father is what his will is for us today. Romans 13, 11, And knowing the time that now is the high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. You see, the sleep and the cares of this world, we've become once again entangled in them. And the enemy, he is clever. He creates a darkness in your life to sleep by. Romans 13, 12, and the night is far spent and the daytime is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You see, your slumber and cares of this life leave you without protection and you have no light. You need to rearm yourself. Romans 13, 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh, that you would fulfill the lust in it. You see, this is what disarming you does. It's allowed you provision and room for your flesh. And you've entangled yourself in darkness once again. And this puts God's children to sleep. Proverbs 3.35 But the wise shall inherit glory, but... The shame shall be to the promotion of fools. If you're wise, you're gathering lost sheep for your father. But if you're a fool, you spend your time gathering to yourself and have been put to sleep. Philippians 3.19 says, Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, and these mind earthly things. Now, we are to make people aware of their condition. This is the harvest. And the enemy is busy removing your tools. We are to make people aware of their condition. This is the harvest. And the enemy, he's busy removing your tools to accomplish the will of your Father. First, he's going to take your light away. Ephesians 5.13 But all things that are reproved are made aware by the light. And whoever brings this awareness is himself light. Next, then, you'll lose your harvesting tool, the sword of truth. 
Without it, you cannot move anyone from this world. They are lost. Matthew 10.34 says, Think not that I have come to send peace on this earth. I did not come to send peace, but a sword. Now, if you've received God's Son, and He lives in your life and moves through you, then you've received a sword. And when you lose this tool, you are powerless and can serve no purpose to the Father. And this is why we pray for harvesters. So many have been disarmed. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now this is how you can tell if you've been disarmed. When the sword no longer protects you. See, you no longer know the difference between your thoughts and spiritual direction. The sword is not there to divide. And you can not keep together your physical joints because of the lack of spiritual marrow that runs through you. And as for your intentions, who knows what they are? If they're never revealed by the truth. And your thoughts... They become the ruler of your flesh and run your life. Now, without light or a weapon, you are sleeping, entangled once again in darkness. And so 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. This is food that I provided to my family for years. I want to now provide it to you. I hope you'll share it with a friend. If you like it, I'll provide more. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.